Guys, ammunition for this video has been provided by Brown Works Inc., manufacturer of fine custom handgun grips. If you guys are looking for very unique, very customized handgun grips for your favorite handgun, contact Mark at Brown Works Inc., link in the description below, and create something beautiful for your favorite handgun. And don't forget to tell them Wyoming Gun Project sent you. What's going on everybody? So today we are gonna take a look at this insanely beautiful Winchester 1873 lever gun. Look at, I mean, this thing is just the epitome of beauty. It's insane how nice this rifle is. And I believe there's a reason it's so nice. And we'll get into that uh, later in the video. But so we're going to take a look at the rifle here on the tabletop like we'd normally do. And then we're going to take it out to the range and fire this puppy up and just shoot her down, man. So this is an actual Winchester 1873. Now this is a newer production 1873. And let's see what we can say there. Uh, it's upside down. But as you can see, it does say Winchester Model 1873. Let me see if I can flip it around here. This is a big gun. I'm working in a tight space. It's just what I have to deal with. Winchester Model 1873. So but while we're on this side, we'll go down the barrel, look at some of the markings and stuff like that there. You see it says Winchester Model 1873, caliber 45 Colt only. And it is in fact chambered in 45 Colt. Now let's see this side. God, I'm trying to knock it into everything with this, this thing. So let me get in closer here. Made by Moroku, Japan. Imported by Baco Inc. in Morgan, Utah. Winchester is a registered trademark of Olin Corporation. So yes, this is made in Japan. And I'm sure all of you are aware you do, you, you interact with Japanese products every day. And it's been my experience that Japanese products have a higher level of detail, quality control. They're, they're just made better. Okay. The Japanese worker and the Japanese industry that makes these things, they take pride in everything they make. You know, if it was made in some other country, even America, not, not, not trying to diss America, but you know, if it was made on a Friday, they'd be like, I'm out of here. If it was made on a Monday, I don't want to be here. But the Japanese, for the most part, have insane attention to detail. And you can see that all over in this rifle. So in case you are unfamiliar with the Winchester 73. And if you're into guns at all, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but in case you're not, and this is your first time here, let's go over some of the features here. This is a side loading King's patent loading gate right here. All right. You load your cartridges in there. It has an under barrel tube fed magazine. I think it holds 12, maybe 10 or 12. This is a 24 inch barrel, 24 inch octagon barrel as you can see here, and it does have a brass bead front sight on it. Okay, the bluing, the deep, look at the deep, dark bluing on this gun. It is insane how good it is. Okay, it is um, color case hardened on the front cap of the handguard here. Color case hardened receiver, lever, butt pad. Let's look at the butt pad here. Color cased hardened butt pad. And real quick, let's just look at how beautiful this wood is. The grain on this wood is insane. How amazing this gun is. Um, we have our lever lock right here. This locks the lever in the up position, preventing you from cycling it. So it's a safety feature. You just move it 
twist it either way. It goes either way. And then you are able to operate the lever. Now, if you look right here, this is an out of battery safety that blocks the trigger. So make sure you have the lever completely closed, moves the safety out of way, and you're able to pull the trigger on here. Um, it is hammer fired, as you can see. There's the half cock position. There's the full cock position. Here is the dust cover, which you can manually slide on and off. Or if you, see, it wouldn't fire because I didn't de depress the lever, the uh, out of battery safety. If you, let me see if we can operate this lever. Uh, let me lift it up on this end, see if we can operate it and show you that when you load a cartridge, okay, you can load it here and it will automatically open the dust cover. So when you manipulate the lever in the down position, the bolt will cock the hammer to full cock. It will open the dust cover and it will lift a cartridge. This is the lifter right here. It will lift a cartridge almost straight in line with the chamber. Guys, this is one of the reasons uh, that these rifles are so reliable because there's no like ramp to boop, boop, overcome or anything like that. It just, the lifter will hold the cartridge in there until you close it. There you go, you see the bolt closing and it will feed straight into the chamber. Then when you fire, boom, you cycle it again, it ejects the empty, empty comes out, ejects the empty, it lifts it, it has another one already in the lifter because when it went down, it fed through the bottom tube magazine and ready to go. Now, the dust cover, you can close it if you're walking in the field, close the dust cover and Per the manual, they recommend you carry the rifle on half cock. So what they recommend in the manual is you put your thumb all the way in like this, let it down to half cock, which is right there, and carry it like that. Uh, and then if you need to fire, you'll have a, a round in the chamber. It's completely safe. If you need to fire, you just thumb the hammer back, which is why they have the knurling right here take your shot, boom, it fires. Obviously we cycle the lever. As you can see, it moves the dust cover out of the way and you've just ejected and loaded another cartridge. Guys, this is, and you've heard many people say this, I'm sure, especially in the gun community. This is America's first assault rifle. Let me do that correctly. America's first assault rifle. This is a, for, you gotta understand something guys for the time. This is a high capacity, high capacity, okay? Self-load, I'm not gonna say self-loading. This is a lever action, this is a manual loading. High capacity, manual loading rifle. For you to get 10, 12, 13 rounds, whatever it is, I think, don't, don't quote me on this, we'll, we'll find out when we go out on the range, but I think it holds 12 plus one. So I think you can actually get 12 or 13. I don't really remember right now, but. You can definitely get more than 10 in here, a 45 Colt. That is a hell of a lot of firepower in 1873, okay? That's an insane amount of firepower. Uh, buckhorn sights, as you can see, the buckhorn rear sight. To adjust the windage, you would just knock this left or right, and to adjust the elevation, you push that little lever forward or back. Again, it's got the brass bead front sight, uh, maybe we'll check the trigger pull on this thing. Guys, this thing is super smooth, super, super gorgeous. As you can see, it says, oh, come on, get in there. Cal 45 Colt, uh, WIJPM. So that stands for Japan, maybe Winchester, Japan. Um, again, I can't speak highly enough about this thing. And the Japanese really know how to. They really know what they're doing and they really take a lot of care in whatever they build. And in this case, it happens to be this insanely beautiful rifle. Uh, I believe, I think the wife got this for me. This was a gift, a Father's Day gift from the wife. Uh, I wanna say 2020, 2021 maybe? Might've been 2020, it was during the pandemic. So we go down to, 
we lived in Virginia at the time. We go down to Green Top, which is a awesome gun store in Ashland, Virginia, closer to Richmond than it is Fredericksburg. We go down there, and at the time, listen, I had the, the SCAR 16, 17, AKs, Tavors, AR, you name it in the game. You know, uh, 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 Bushmaster ACRs, I had all that kind of stuff, okay? And, and, you know, I was kind of like, I, I'm tired of the time. I was like, I'm tired of the tactical stuff. I still have a lot of that, but I was getting kind of uh, burnt out on it. I said, I want a super nice lever gun in 45 Colt. We go down there. They had two of these. They had this one, well, again, with the 24-inch uh, full octagon barrel. And then they had one where it was 24 inches, but it was octagon to about here and then it was round and that one was in 38 357 magnum but i really wanted the 45 colt one so we went with this one and this is not a cheap rifle man if you look these up these things are pushing 2k so and but for that you get insane quality you get i mean the lever is just butter smooth now could one of these gunsmiths that you know, work in cowboy action it is butter smooth. Could one of these gunsmiths that work in the cowboy action thing and slicking these things up make it even smoother? Absolutely. Absolutely. But as it comes out of the factory, now I have a Henry in 45 Colt that my father gave me. We'll see that on the channel later. And I have a Rossi in 357 Magnum, which has made brief appearances on the channel in the form of shorts and stuff like that. We'll also see a full review of that one on the channel. Now, that's a 94. Uh, I think it's Winchester 94 pattern, it, but it is, who buddy, are they nowhere near the quality of this, but they're nowhere near the price either. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, one thing the Henry has that this one does not have, the only way you can load it is the side loading gate. The Henry also has a tube. Now, my father's is an older, well, mine, the one my father gave me, is an older tube fed only. I think a lot of the Henrys now are coming with both. The, the, the tube magazine that can be removed, not tube fed only, I'm sorry, tube fed magazine uh, only loading. There's no side loading gate. A lot of the newer Henrys come with side loading gate and the ability to tube feed, which is which is, you know, you either like it or you don't. I'm more of a fan of the original design. But <clears throat> there it is. Let's see. Let me lock this. Uh, let's see what the trigger pull is like on this thing, man. I don't know what. Um, let's see. How can we do this? Maybe I'll flip it over and we'll get a shot of the other side of. Look at that. Now, if you want to get inside, you just remove the screw on this side plate. It goes, as you can see, it goes right through to this side. And then you can see all the, the workings, inner workings of the rifle. Um, but it's basically just like an elbow style working of it. Let's see if I can get a trigger pull on this sucker. It's kind of going to be awkward. Oops, start. Let me fire this up. Did I... 414. So, you know what? Um, because it's so, I'm not going to do three because it's just, it's too awkward to try to do it. But let's try, let's get, let's show the, again, as you can see, it is, the outer battery safety is not depressed. So the trigger will not fall. But, you, know, you see how it moves out of the way? So let me, let me see if I can do it this way. I really got to find a place where I can get a lot more for these rifles. So, Here's the take up, very, very light take up. Oop, wall, and then fire. It's a really nice trigger. It's not super light, but it breaks, you know, I would say about four pounds is probably right. So let's get this beautiful piece of art. This really is like a work of art. So let's get this beautiful, beautiful piece of art out on the range and just see how it shoots. Range portion of this review. We have the Winchester 1873. We have some 45 Colt ammo. We have our steel down at 25. We're just gonna bang away with some steel at 25 and uh, just see how it shoots. Man, look at, 
Look at that case color hardening in the sun. Uh, it is, this is a absolutely gorgeous rifle. It's insane. Let's start out put about five rounds in and just, uh, you know, just bang away at some steel. Here we go. Guys, uh, first thoughts and shooting impressions. I mean, it's a fairly heavy rifle and it's in 45 Colt, so it's not, not a lot of recoil. Um, it shoots fantastic. It shoots smooth. Um, I've always loved shooting this rifle. It's a very, very smooth shooting gun, man. So let's keep banging away. All right, folks, accuracy portion of this review. We have a C-Zone Steel. Uh, I got a log down here. This is 100 meters, 100 yards to that little berm. And we have a C-Zone Steel set up over there. I couldn't paint it because both my paint cans were clogged. So I guess I'm not going to paint it. We're going to try to hit it with the Winchester 1873 in 45 cold. I know it's not that difficult a shot, but it is. A smaller target. It's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see on here. I think I'm going to flip this camera around and see if I can zoom in uh, on it. But let's just take a couple shots at that, see if we can hit that sucker. All right. So we'll try a couple offhand shots standing. And then if I have to, I'll kneel down. But I might have to move a little closer because of the way this camera zoomed in. So let's just see if we can hit it offhand. I know this is not that spectacular, but. Oh, that was a miss to the right, I think. Whoa, missed the left. Losing that brass bead, man. There we go. All right, folks. Final thoughts on the Winchester 1873 made by Moroku in Japan. It's fantastic. It is beautiful. This is a... Guys, this is a piece of art. This type of gun. And let me tell you what. The Japanese are known for their attention to detail, and it shows in this gun. This thing is fantastic. This thing is gorgeous. It's beautiful. It shoots great. It's just, it's amazing. 
Um, I got nothing else to say about it. I haven't checked on the prices of these lately. As I said before, I think this was a Father's Day gift 20, 20 2021 maybe. It was during COVID, so it was four years ago plus maybe. I stayed in the tabletop. Uh, we went down to Green Top in Ashland, Virginia when we lived there. And I already had, the wife said, you could buy a gun. And I already had all the tactical. I had the SCAR 16s, 17s, AKs, ARs, you know, you name it. I had all the tactical stuff. And I went down there and I said, I want something like retro as hell. I want a nice, I want a really nice lever gun. And they had this there. Uh, they also had the one, I think, with the octagon barrel up to about here and then it was round. But I think that was in a different caliber. And I was looking for this in 45 Colt. That one might have been in 357, 38. But um, yeah, there it is, guys. Let me know what you think about the Winchester 1873. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.